are red, violets are blue. Now a sequence about poetry just for you. The idea, according to Sam on our crew, was to steal from the masters to see what people would do. So Melissa plays the part of a would-be poet with material stolen. Will anyone know it? Remember, things aren't as they appear. These words were really written by Frost and Shakespeare. As we go out to the street, you'll see what we mean. Yes, a poet with problems. That's our next candid scene. I'm writing a poem, okay. and I have to read it to my class tomorrow. Okay. And I was wondering if I could read you a few lines to get some feedback. Sure. Is that okay? Okay. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease hath all too short a date. Isn't that Shakespeare? I'm sorry? Isn't that Shakespeare? No, I just wrote it last night. Oh. I'm trying to emulate his style, but I want it to be really... Compare thee to a summer's day, that's, that's Shakespeare. I'm pretty positive that's Shakespeare. Well, do you think maybe if I change it to winters? No. <laughs> it'd be more original? No. <laughs> no? No, I'm pretty positive that that's Shakespeare. So there's a very close resemblance to um, Shakespeare. All right. Well, so how do you say it resembles Shakespeare? Just in the language. I was trying to emulate Shakespeare's style. Do you well, think, you got it, yeah. Do you think it sounds like Shakespeare? Yeah, it sure did. But I don't want it to sound too much like Shakespeare because then I'll get in trouble for my class. Ah, uh, you won't get in trouble. <laughs> you know, you're asking the wrong guy. I don't know Shakespeare, and I failed English. I wrote this one as well. Two roads diverged in a yellow Robert wood. Robert Frost. <laughs> well, he was my influence and inspiration. No, that's the beginning of his poem. Well, no. Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Night by Robert Frost. Well, well I used it as inspiration, but no. I wrote it myself. No. No, you I didn't. You copied his exact words, Ken. No, no. I read his poem. Listen, I knew his daughter. Trust me, that's Robert Frost's poem. <laughs> well, it's a little interesting. I think it could be a little bit clearer, maybe a little bit longer. Um, okay. I don't know. I think it's up to you to, to take that one and roll with it. I'm not a big poetry person, as you can tell. I, I do nails, so it's kind of out of my way. But I would say, um, yeah, I'd give it, just spend some time with it, maybe. Um, what would I say? Make it a little bit more clear, a little bit easier to understand. It's kind of hard to understand, so I think you're probably looking at maybe like a C or a D, if you don't know. Wow. Yeah. Well, there's one more line. It was um, written by a TV show. A TV show? Yes. Uh -huh. The Candid Camera TV show. Oh, really? Yes. Do and you, where, where does that line fall in today? It falls in right over there, if you want to smile, because you're on Candid Camera. <laughs> Good luck with your poem. You're on Candid Camera. We were surprised that most people knew fast about the great poems from days in the past. Of course, one woman did miss many details, but as she explained, she's mostly into nails. <laughs> but if the words were modern from the Beatles, in fact, would that make a change in how people react? To find out, let's head back to the street with a new group of people for Melissa to meet. Frankie McCarthy picks up the rice in the church where a wedding has been, lives in a dream. Who is Frankie? Frankie McCarthy. Frankie McCarthy, yeah. Who's Frankie McCarthy? He's the man that I, that I wanted to write this poem about. Oh. <laughs> Somebody you know? You don't know who Frankie McCarthy is? No, I don't. Well, that's okay. How do you think it sounds? Not so good? Not so good, no. What do you think I should change? I was thinking about adding all the lonely people at the end. All the lonely people at the end? Yes. No. Picks up the rice in the church where a wedding has been. Lives in a dream. That's cool, then, yeah. You like Some it? Some imagery there, I like that. You think? I like, the, I, like, I like the rice thing in, in the church. Well, do you think that I should change anything to make it sound a little better? 
I mean, if you were a professor, what you know, what I don't, would you I, give I don't want to, I don't want to hinder your expression at all. You know, what I'm saying I see poetry as something that's pure, and I don't want to, I don't want to come in with some corruption. So, I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it be. Okay, but all I'm telling you is the words to a Beatles song, okay. actual song, was Father Mackenzie picks up the rice in the church where a wedding has been, lives in the dream, da, 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 and it goes on with more words, but those are the exact words. So someone's going to think, if your teacher has any age to, to her, her or him, they're going to know you took that from a Beatles song. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm the exact words. Well, you couldn't have been any more exact. Those are the exact words from Beatles songs, so you can't say it's original. Frankie McCarthy there picks you go. up the rice in the church where <laughs> no. a wedding has been. <laughs> no. Lives in a dream. Eleanor Rigby. No, no, Frankie McCarthy. <laughs> Frankie McCarthy. <laughs> what do you think? It's the same number of syllables. I'm sorry? Frankie McCarthy has the same number of syllables as Eleanor Rigby. You're instantly busted there. Have you ever heard the poem, Smile, You're on Candid Camera? No. <laughs> you look right over there. Get out of here. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Those people were great. They didn't give much flat. But I promise no more rhymes when we come right back. 